All right. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shalom to the elders of GMS who I do learn from. Right? Today's lesson. Appreciate your peace. Slash, know what, know what you're asking for. Right? So, you know, um, really upon meditating upon, you know, a lot of different things, you know, of course, that, you know, transpired, you know, uh, you know, within my life. And oftentimes, you know, that's what that's what, uh, you know, has brothers, you know, uh, you know, uh, comes up with certain lessons. Of course, first and foremost is the spirit working within us, but also, you know, brothers to see or examine certain things from their lives and then learn from it. And then also, you know, share that wisdom or experience with, you know, you brothers and sisters. Right. So, you know, me and myself, what I've been seeing is you really have to be careful what you ask for. Right. And also appreciate your peace. Right. Because in this truth, we go through many different trials and tribulations. Right. And in those middle periods of when, you know, they're not saying that you're not going through a trial or, uh, or tribulation where it ain't really nothing afflicting you. Right. That's that little peace period until uh, until something else comes. And ultimately, that's why it says uh, and Micah. All right. Let me go ahead and grab that because I wanted to start hearing Hebrews four. Right. But uh, but that's why it says right here in Micah. Right. Micah, chapter two, verse ten. Micah chapter 2, verse 10, it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Right? Because in this life, right, you have the narrow path and you have the path that leads, uh, uh, that's wide and leads to destruction, like it says in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Right? So, right here, what it's saying is, this place right here is not our rest. Right? You know, w w while we're still here, we have to go through many different trials and tribulations. And then while we're not going through trials and tribulations, it's just that midway period until something else comes. Right. And we have to continue to stay on that straight gate. Right. So let me go ahead and grab that in Matthew, because that straight gate is called the path of difficulty. Right. Matthew chapter seven and verse 13. Right. It says, enter ye, enter ye in at the straight gate. Right. Straight. I mean, uh, let me see. Let me see if I can go to S-T-R-A-I-T. Straight definition. It says a narrow passage of water concerning. Let me see. Straight. Let me see. It says bad or difficult situation. Um, dire straits. Right. That person is in dire straits. Uh, a plight, a trouble, difficulty. You see. So it says enter ye in at the straight gate. So it's narrow. Right. And anybody who knows walking down a narrow uh, or driving down a narrow street, that's that, it, it's a little difficult. Right. So it says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. And this is where it leads into the, the other topic where it says, know what you're asking for, right? Because oftentimes, you know, brothers and sisters are asked the, the Heavenly Father for certain things that may not really be beneficial for you, right? And the Heavenly Father might be withholding those certain things from you because he knows who you are. He knows how you are, and he knows that these particular things that you want or desire will actually take you off course, the course or that narrow passage that he has for you, right? So you really got to be careful what it is that you're asking for in this ministry, right? Because you want to ask for things that are conducive for your walk to continue, right? Because like I always go into, it's about enduring the battle, right? It's about enduring the straight gate, right? It's about enduring all the way into the end, right? Longevity. And that's what you need in this ministry. You need longevity, man. Right. So the Heavenly Father, if he truly wants you, if he truly loves you and delights in you, he's not going to give you something that's going to throw you off. Right now, ultimately, you keep pressing it. If Heavenly Father might say, you know what, I'm going to let him have it real quick. And, and so that way he can see how much of a how, how much of a headache it is, how, how, how difficult, you know, that, that are actually or how how uh, how do you say how, how uh, rocky that it make his life. Right. So the Heavenly Father, he'll withhold certain things from you. Right. Really for your own good. Right. And then I'm going to come back here. Right. Because um, man, I think I'm going to finish it out and I want to grab something else. Right. So Matthew 7 and 14, it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life and few the few there be that find it. Right. So that's the point. It's not going to be many people walking this road. Right. It says the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Right. One man among a thousand have I found righteous, like King Solomon said in his, uh, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Right. And among women, I found none, meaning not saying that there's no righteous woman. It's just very scarce. Just like it's a very scarce amount of righteous men, you see, when you read the scriptures, it's very as a very scarce amount of righteous men, and when you read the scriptures, it's a very scarce amount of righteous women. So it's the same thing, right? So meaning that there's going to be few people actually walking this straight gate, man, and there's there's going to be people that's called to actually walk this straight gate, but what? Uh, let me see. It says um, 
think is that in here for many are called but few are chosen no nah, I, I don't know but basically the point is many are called into this thing but few are actually chosen man so right this is all about longevity now going back to the point where you ask in the heavenly father for, uh, for certain things he'll actually withhold certain things from you for you know if he wants you for your longevity man right for you for you to actually endure right because he knows that certain things that you actually ask for like with your child your child will actually ask for certain things but you know daggone well that if they get that oh, i'm gonna focus more on school mom or i'm gonna focus more on school that or whatever you know what i mean you know you know that's gonna take up their time or you know it's gonna distract them or you know it ain't gonna be good for them but they can't see that right so let me get let me get this james chapter 4 and verse uh verse 2 it says he lusts and, and, and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight in war yet ye have not because he acts not so sometimes you don't have things right because you don't ask the heavenly father for it right so sometimes you really just have to ask for it if you want more utterance utter, utterance of the spirit right then the heavenly father will stood that you want more wisdom then he'll give it to you you gotta ask you got you want more faith he'll give it to you right i seen this uh, uh, uh this post it says something about uh, or, or this little video it says something about I, I, I asked God for wisdom. He gave me more difficult situations for me to uh to, for me to figure out. Uh, I asked for, uh, I think the other I can't remember the other part that he said maybe but it was something along the lines of I asked for strength. The Heavenly Father you know sent me some pain or something like that. But to the extent that what if you want certain things, the Heavenly Father will bestow those things upon you. But be prepared to actually put in the work to obtain those things. You asking for more wisdom. Right, the heavenly Father gonna try to he gonna put you in through uh, some situations because you know wisdom and sorrow go hand in hand, man. Right, that's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Right, and then you know, uh, and much wisdom is much grief. You see what I'm saying? So wisdom, wisdom and grief go hand in hand because you got to go through some things to obtain that experience or wisdom. Right, and then also what was I saying that 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 you you want you want more faith? Right, the heavenly Father gonna put you in some in some situations where it tests it tests you that tries you to have some faith. Trust in him, right? You want more knowledge, and you're gonna have to read more, right? And he's gonna bless your efforts in doing so and allowing you to soak up that knowledge, to soak up that wisdom, to learn from those experiences or things that you're going through, right? That's how it works. You gotta put in the work. You see what I'm saying? So read that reading this on. So sometimes you don't have things, right? Because you excuse the noise in the background, so lock you. But um you sometimes you don't have things because of the fact that um Sometimes you don't have things because of the fact that you don't ask. But, and then also, there's also a, a, another flip to that. It says, verse 3, ye acts and receive not because ye acts and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Right? That's the, that's the other point, too. Sometimes you want things just for your own pleasure, but in doing so, you know what I mean? Basically, those pleasures can actually be your ruin. Right? Let me read this in the GNT. So it says, James chapter 4 and verse 2. So let me highlight it for y'all. James chapter four, verse two, it says, you want things, but cannot have them. So you are ready to kill. You strongly desire things and you cannot, but you cannot get them. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want because you do not ask the heavenly father for it. So some cases you don't have things because you don't ask for it. You need to just ask for it. You want more faith, just ask for it, right? The heavenly father, he'll give it, you know, give you wisdom and faith. He give like, you know, and he'll, like he gives to all men liberally, right? To a certain to a certain measure, and then you've been proven faithful with that, then he'll bestow more upon you, right? So verse three it says, and when you ask, you do not receive it because your motives are bad. You ask for things to use for your own pleasures, meaning meaning you know pleasures that are going to lead you astray. Because now we are human beings, we do have pleasures, right? The, the scriptures tell you to do good unto yourself. Don't deprive thyself of a good uh, of a good day's uh, uh, pleasure and things like that, right? But within reason, right? Like I believe Paul, like Paul said, he said. Um, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient, right? Because even though something may be lawful for you, it's lawful for me to eat 100 cheeseburgers, yeah, but is it expedient? No, right? So, you know, but it's beef, okay, yeah, but it's not expedient, right? That's why you're going to gain 100, 200 pounds and may get some chronic heart disease and then you're dead, right? Eating lawful meat, but being being in uh, eating it in excess, being a glutton, right? So the point is, right? Certain things you don't receive also because it's the heavenly father uh, abstaining those things or, 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 or uh, like restraining those things from you. So that way you don't uh, harm yourself, man, because he delights in you. Right. And we are children, man. Right. 
You know, like, you know, ultimately the Heavenly Father, we are the Heavenly Father's children. And he wants to protect us, right? Those of us who are of the remnant, the elect, which I don't want to rock as I am, as well as you sincere hearted brothers listening, you sisters of the remnant, man, right? So let me uh, read on, right? Because when it talks about your own pleasures, right? This is what, you know, also it goes into about pleasures as well. <clears throat> it says, Sirach chapter 19, verse 5, Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life. So that's the point. A lot of times in his in his life, man, is uh, you know about being great. You gonna have to resist a lot of stuff, man, to to achieve the things that you really want to achieve. I'm seeing that in my life. You really have to resist a lot of things, man. You gotta resist a lot, and that's and that's and that's really what makes you stronger. When you go to the gym, what are you doing? You putting on more more weight on your muscles, and you and you pushing those weights up and down, or however whatever range of motion you're doing it in. But um, you you pushing those uh those muscles to the limit with, with with resistance. It's called resistance training, right? And that what that tears down your muscle, beats you down, and makes you stronger. You see, so if you truly want to be great, and then after it, after your muscle you know repairs itself, it comes back even stronger, right? So that's the point, man. This this the, the, you know resisting pleasures crown of your life, man. Right. So you really got to be careful what you uh, what you ask for in this truth, man, because you want to ask for things that are going to have you continually endure. Right. You may be wanting more women. Right. But now understanding that might come with a headache, you know, or, or you might you might you might be so thirsty for a husband. Right. And then and then what happens? You know, you so thirsty for it, you might go out and grab one and it's the wrong one. And then you stuck with him. Right. And, and or, 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 or you might we might want more money. Now you you give up more of your time. To go chase that bag more. Now you're serving the Heavenly Father less, right? And now He's not your main priority. And now, how is that going to end up for you in the, in the long run? You, you understand what I'm saying? So, these things you really have to keep in mind when, and, and it's truth, man, right? Right now is not our rest. This is our time. Like, you know how they say, like, when you're young, that's the time you really want to be laboring. That's the time you want to be, uh, you know, hitting, you know, getting the bag. So that way, when you, when you like 40, 50 years old, in your late 30s, you can, you know, you be, be enjoying the fruits of, you know, your hard work that you done put in when you was in your 20s. That's the point. Right now, you want to be laboring, right? When I say laboring, for those of you who are not allotted to be, you know, teachers or prophets on them highways and byways, okay. If you're, you know, allotted to be a help, you know, for the sisters, that's not your lot, you know, either, right? Mainly speaking to the brothers that, you know, may not be out in there on the highways and byways, and it may not be a lot. Who knows, right? It may, because you have oftentimes in the scriptures, when you read, especially in the book of Acts, you had men that weren't like prophets. They were actually just believers. Right. And, and they're going to be saved. Right. <clears throat> you see, contingent upon them, continuing to endure in their faith. You see what I'm saying? But ultimately, I say that to say uh, uh, I say that to say this. You got to continue to labor, meaning through these different trials and tribulations, because, you know, you're so supposed to be keeping the law, statutes and commandments in this in, in this filthy you know, a uh, uh, polluted world. And, and sometimes it gets tough, right? Because you got, you know, situations trying to pull you here, situations trying to pull you there. And, and, and a part of your fight is to continue to keep doing what you know you're supposed to, making sure you're reading, making sure you're studying, making sure you're tuning in the videos, living a righteous lifestyle, making sure you're guiding your family, or if it's just you just guiding yourself, you know, and it, like, you know, not guiding yourself, being guided by the spirit of Yahweh Yahusha, but making sure you're staying in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? Doing what's right. You know, that's that that may be your fight, you know, and you got to do it to the best of your ability. Right. And then ultimately, you know, you know, in a fight, there's going to be some type of resistance. You see what I'm saying? And so we get to that point right here at 14 and 22. It says confirming the souls of the of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must do much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father. So you got to go through tribulation till you get to the kingdom. That's that's just how I go. It's the same for me. It's the same for y'all. We got to continue to keep fighting until we get there, right? And that goes into the precept that I wanted to start out with. That's the spirit, right? Because you may want to start out somewhere, but the Heavenly Father, he has a, a, a plan, something totally different, right? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. It says what? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall into the same example of unbelief, right? That's the point, man. So we got to continue to labor, right? Push through work, right? Put forth that effort. And so we get to the kingdom, man. So we get that eternal rest, right? Because right, right now, like, like the scripture we pulled out, Micah chapter 2, verse 10, this is not our rest, man. It's polluted. It will destroy you. It will defile you, right? So you can't, you can't. You got to stay on that straight gate, that path of difficulty. And it ain't going to be easy, 
right? That's why brothers, you know, I, you know, I, I make sure I bring out the scripture a lot of times for brothers. It's like it says in Sirach, the second chapter, man, right? Sirach chapter two, verse uh, uh, the two and one, right? Sirach two and one, it says, my son, if thou come to serve, I don't want to prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, right? Longevity, endurance until the end, fighting, don't give up. Right. It says, make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy, life, uh, thy, thy last end. So that's the point, man. Right. So when you when you when, when you get all the way to that point, sometimes you feel like you about to break the heavenly father. Boom. Give you that increase so that way you're able to bear it, man, because ultimately the heavenly father, he's not going to give you something that you cannot bear. Right. He's not going to he's not going to try you above what what me, uh, what uh, uh, measure. You, you know, a uh, uh, faith, you know, he's giving you. So say if he's giving you a certain measure of faith, right? Level five. He's not going to give you some level 10 uh, uh, faith requirement problem, right? You, you got to have level le level 10 faith to handle that problem. He's not going to get that to you. He's going to he's going to make sure, you know, you got exactly what you need to overcome that problem. Right. So the heavenly father. And that's if he wants you. You see what I'm saying? So that's the point, right? And we have to remember that what? That the Heavenly Father has not appointed us to wrath, but to receive salvation, man. So if you got the spirit to keep fighting, keep pushing that help, that, that shows you that the Heavenly Father, he's dealing with you, man, right? And how do you know that? Let me go ahead and grab this in the book of 1 John, chapter 3, and I believe it's 19 or 24. Yeah, verse, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 24, it says, and, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, right? And hereby we know that he abideth, that he abideth in us by the spirit which he have given us. So if you still got the Holy Spirit, that Habakkuk will dash in you, which is that spirit to keep on believing, keep fighting, keep enduring, do you know that he's still supping with you, right? And that's why King David actually actually asked what? In Psalms 51, he said, please don't, don't, don't withdraw your Holy Spirit from me because King David knows how precious, right? And you should know how precious this Habakkuk will dash in you is because ultimately that's a representation of that the, that the Heavenly Father, he's still dealing with you. Right. And if he's still dealing with you, then you still got a shot. Right. So don't 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 give up, you know, and understand, you know, like like the lesson. Right. Understand what you ask him for. Right. And, and just appreciate your peace, man. Right. That's where that's where I'm at now. I appreciate my peace, you know, and um, you really got to be careful what you ask him for, brothers and sisters. So just uh, that's, it, it's definitely just a warning. And then also just uh, just appreciate your peace where it comes, man. Right. We almost up out of here, you know. We almost home. This devil is falling. We got, you know, you know, Yahweh Yahweh shot got him on the ropes, man. So we just gotta kick back and just not kick back. Put your put 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 the uh, uh the pedal to the metal. But when I say by kick back, I'm just 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 we just gotta continue to wait on how uh one man, the heavenly Father and His Son Yahweh Shai. So with that, man, I sincerely pray that you true believers were edified, exhorted, and comforted. And give all I want, and I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Broken thumb to all you sincere, the true believers, man. Shalom.